guys, welcome to the very first episode of MFF vs. ATV Podcast. I'm ATV! Yes, we're <laughs> with ATV and we're with D-Crack as well. Hey, what's up guys? Say shut up and say gonna shake. Yeah! What's up everyone? D-Crack here. <laughs> welcome to ATV. Well, it's not my channel, so I can't really say that. Yeah. But I know. We're, what? We're, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all friends here, but we have three three subjects we're going to talk about today. Dude, no lie, though. Before we start, does it really seem like we've been friends for like 20 years? Yeah, it, it feels like that. We feel like old, old, old ladies. It's just four, We're three old ladies still rocking away. Well, yeah, it, it's like that uh, that picture I put on Facebook where it's uh, the three of us olds, and I said, anybody off for, for some bingo? Exactly. <laughs> if you look at like YouTube and everything, we've really only known each other for what about a year? Yeah, about right? a year. If, if, I don't even know if I've known. Well, I've known MF a little longer, but um, it's probably just about a year now for you, right, Austin? It feels like we've been friends like for at least five, ten years. Yeah, I just kind of <laughs> like midway, halfway through it. Yeah. Well, we had a had an interesting story happen. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, uh... <laughs> Freaking nearly traumatized right. me, if that makes any sense. All right. I don't even know if I want to make a video on the subject because it just freaks me out so damn much. But, dude, I had a dream. I had a dream about uh, a couple hours ago as we're recording this. And in the dream, I I guess you could say I encountered a ghost. But I'll, t- I'll tell the story real fast, okay? So I um, I was home alone. It was about the evening time. It was sunny outside. My dog, Otis, was scratching along the uh, the kitchen the kitchen wall. You know, like a dog scratch themselves. So um, when he pushed onto the uh, the wall, and if you if I, if I physically went up to the wall and pushed on it, the ceiling marked like three line holes in the ceiling, uh, like back to back to back in the same row. So if I went to push on the wall, the entire... Uh, uh, half of the house would start moving and it would like break open the uh, the uh, attic and the uh, top of the roof so I could see up over the house. So I was like, okay, that's a little, that's a little weird. But then like when my mother came home, I showed it to her and I was like, is there, I started like saying, is there a way we can, like spackle this up and maybe fix this or something? So I just thought something was wrong with the house. But like as the day went on, just other weird things started to happen, you know, like Things started moving around the house. My door, every door in the house started slamming back and forth. I started to get really freaked out at this point. So I brought my camera out so I can like film it, you know, I guess for my YouTube channel, if if anything was to happen. And then when it got darker outside, things got completely worse. Light started flickering and, and, uh, and my bedroom door started slamming back and forth even harder than before. And uh, I was like literally physically in tears at this point. I was like, I was begging my mother to take me to a hotel room. And she, she herself was like, okay, you know, this is probably not a bad idea. So she goes into her room to uh, start getting dressed or whatever to get out of here. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go in my room and get some things so I can just have some stuff with me. And the craziest shit happened. I was so freaked out. I have these colorful lights in my room set up. I have like Christmas lights. I have like a a blue light, a red light, a a green light, a, a a pink light, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I started asking the spirits, the spirit questions, whatever, whatever that was in the house. <clears throat> and the, the crazy thing is I don't remember what I was asked. I don't even remember the questions to be honest with you, but it kept going green for yes and blue for no. And it turns out the spirit wasn't really bad. She was just trying to get my attention and, and it really worked. Uh, while I'm recording this, by the way, I turn the camera to myself and I can see her standing behind me in the viewfinder. And I could, I could describe her perfectly to a T. She was like 14, 15, 16 years old. She had black thick glasses and blonde hair. She had like a pink shirt and a blue, uh, blue jeans on. And she was smiling at me that I was a- finally able to see her. And what scared me the most is that like, I, like I recognized her. I recognized her. And I, I can't tell you who, who it was at the time. I knew it was somebody from school, perhaps. And I freaking woke up in a panic, and I started writing it down. And I, I posted it on my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, asking for, like, people if they could advice. tell me what yeah, – yeah, advice or if anybody could, like, tell me what the dream was about. Yeah, yeah, like, like, uh, like analyze it. Yeah, analyze the dream. And then uh, I went back to sleep for, like, another hour or two. 
And I woke up again with a bunch of text messages telling me that uh, D-Crack was live. I was like, oh, crap. It was like 11 o'clock at the time. So I quickly hop on the stream, and I'm like – I was explaining what happened, that I was freaking out. And I go over to my bookshelf and pull out my yearbook because I was like, oh, well, it's it's somebody that I recognize from school, so let me see if I see her. So I open up the book. I flip a few pages, and oh, my God, if I did not see her – she was in the same grade as me. Uh, I won't say her name, but I saw her her picture, and I r- realized that um, she died in a freaking car crash in 2017 at about the age of 16, 17 years old. So w- when I Damn, saw her, that's creepy, on man. The camera, when I saw her on the camera, she was wearing a pink shirt and blue jeans. So I was like, oh, well, what if that's what she was wearing when she died? Yeah. It's so sad, man. That, and even that is- like. The freaking cemetery. I, I googled her um, obituary, and it's her the, where they buried her is right up the road from where I live. Now, now that's creepy. And it, I'm I'm kind of wondering if I should even go up to go up to the cemetery or make some sort of video about. It. I don't know if it, if it's like disrespectful or. I don't, I don't I don't believe it would be disrespectful. I think it's out of like curiosity purposes. I mean, regardless if you had the dream or not, you know, Austin, you're you're able to visit a public grave, you know. Yeah, I know it's, um, it's just, it, cre- it creeps me out because I barely knew her that much, and the fact that she chose me, you know, we had Aubrey Aubrey on the uh, on the on live, the live stream. stream earlier. I was explaining that I saw when I saw her, she was glowing a very bright blue. <laughs> And for apparently, if you're gl- uh, if a spirit is glowing a certain color, it usually means uh, a certain thing. So glowing blue usually means like somebody that's trying to get your attention, letting the said person know that this person is okay. No, Aubrey said yeah. non non threatening. Non threatening. Yeah. 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 yeah like, like, d- dude, uh, not not to cut you off or anything, but like, I never heard of anything about ghosts glowing different colors. I never, never yeah. knew that. Their aura, they, they, they glow a different color, like like gold, blue, green, a red would be bad, or yeah, black. I, well, yeah, black or red or gray or whatever. I just don't know, man. I'm just – I'm just creepy. I was physically shaking on the live stream. I was shaking. I was hyperventilating. I, my heart was beating like 10 times as fast as normal. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that, man. It's it's up to you, but uh, I don't think it'd be disrespectful to go to the grave. But um, I know you mentioned maybe trying to reach out to her parents, but I don't know. I a lot of people kind of advised against that, you know. I don't know. Like, it's just bizarre. Like like contacting her parents or trying to find her parents is a little taking it like over the edge. And she 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 was, if I remember correctly, she was very popular in school. She had a lot of friends, and I. And I, like I said, I wasn't really close to her. I knew of her, but I, what, what what creeps me out the most is how come she didn't reach out to some of her other friends than than to me? It's or just, family, True. yeah, or family, or or even or even crazier. What if she did reach out to them as well? And I just don't know. True. That's, yeah, that's, I don't, I don't, I don't know if annoying. spirits can reach out to multiple people at one time. But I, I guess I've never. I mean, I'm sure it's a possibility, but I've never really heard of. Um, I guess spirits reaching out to people in dreams, but I mean, hasn't didn't Michael claim that he's had dreams about angry grandpa? So like, yeah. I don't know. So it may be. But, yeah, uh, I, I've had dreams like that before. Like, I mean, just a quick, quick little sidetrack story. You know, I told, I, I think I told you about this before. I had a dream a, a few years of, a, a few years ago. I think it was last year, where I saw my grandmother in a dream. Uh huh. She was. Uh, we used to go on little field trips together. And in the dream, you know, we were popping our stuff, getting ready to go on a little trip. And I look up at her and she looks at me and smiles like with this, like, I haven't seen you in a long, long time smile. Uh huh. It's, it's another one of those creepy ass dreams. Damn. But uh, I wake up and I realize that it was the 10 year anniversary of her death when I had the dream. Oh, that's not a coincidence. That, that, that's not. Yeah, that's not. Because she passed away in 2000. 2008, and uh, it was definitely last year. So it was 2018. So it was 20. It was 10 year anniversary. It was like, oh gosh, wow. <laughs> it's like when Michael, you know that uh, vlog Michael did, where he was wake. He woke up and he was crying because he had a dream about one of his grandparents. Yeah. And then he called uh, in the dream. The grandparent tells uh, him to call his mother. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he called his mother, and his mother was thinking about the same person. It's like. That's crazy. 
little crazy. bizarre things like that that just it's it's crazy, but it's it's real. It makes you think. It's a real thing, for sure. Yeah. All right. All right, MF. Now you now now you have a four of this YouTube bull, bullshit. Now, like, let's start it off short. Like this whole COPPA thing with YouTube. Like to me, it makes no sense where YouTube is putting creators underneath the bus for their for their mistakes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and like I said, I'm not an expert about this cop or the FTC or anything, but I've watched yeah, probably I've probably watched a good handful of videos, you know, MF, just because I'm yeah. curious and I don't want to be like in the dark. You know, I don't want to be like one of those channels that January first hits and I'm like, oh well, I don't I didn't know anything about this. And then, you know, yeah. get your my channel taken down because I didn't do the research and figure out what's going on. But it's like um it it's just it's way too vague. It's like they're it's just a bunch of it's a bunch of like old men politicians who are making yeah. rules they don't even know what youtube is they don't use electronics they don't do nothing and they're like they well we need to you ban know. creators it's like you don't even fucking use youtube so why are you making rules that are going to affect millions exactly and you, you don't even you know i watched a video last night and this person said that um one of the one of the people in the FTC or whatever that's making up these rules, you know, MF, MF yeah. they said that this guy said he read somewhere that one of these guys that's making up the rules or helping with the rules for the cop and FTC mm -hmm. doesn't even own a smartphone. Are you and serious? Does, and does, he didn't even know what YouTube was until someone told him. Oh so my God. literally some, some old, some old ass man who doesn't even have a smartphone Probably is totally out of touch with, um, you know, the internet and all that. The current society is making rules that are going to affect YouTubers, and this guy doesn't even have a, a smartphone. Well, and what's here's what's really scary, you know, Steve Jobs, the creator of Apple, uh, Bill Gates, the creator of Microsoft. He, uh, he, they both have said many on many occasions that they do not give their children uh, access to the internet because. I mean, oh, yeah. it's a dark I, place. I mean, yeah. from what I've heard, you know, the internet's a dangerous place anyway. But from what I heard, is what the internet is supposedly made for is to dumb down the uh, general public. Yeah. Well, another thing to add about about the people working at COPPA and the FTC, they some of them don't even know how the internet works. You know yeah, I mean? it's like some sixty-five-year-old man who's making these laws. Oh well, well, you can't you can't have children on YouTube. Well, it's two thousand almost two thousand twenty. Exactly. Kids, adults, a lot of older people. Like I heard someone say that there's there's five-year-olds. There's like five-year-olds that play Minecraft. Yep. And there's people in their sixties who play Minecraft. You can't yep. say this is a kids video game. If it's a video game or anything on the internet that someone enjoys, entertainment, yeah. anyone can enjoy it. Why are you saying, "Oh, this is considered a kids song"? Therefore, if an adult likes it, they can't watch it, or it, uh, you know, vice versa. If something's on the internet, it's for everybody, not just for kids or not for kids. It's uploaded for everyone, unless it's like age restricted or something obviously not yeah. okay for kids. But um, I mean, as bad as this sounds, too, guys. You know, I don't want to get too graphic and stuff but you think about it how many i mean let's be honest we've all we've all at one point in our life probably watched porn right i don't yeah. want to talk about this too much but i'm sure we're all guys here at some point in our life i'm sure we've all watched porn who hasn't and the yeah. thing is how many of us when we're 15 16 years 15 16 years old you go on a website you know a porn website and it's you have to click the thing are you 18 or older how many how many exactly. of us li lied about that exactly you, you exactly. click yeah exactly you Wait. click yes. How many porn sites say are you over 18 or over? And you say no, yes. You're, you're 16 years old. Yes. I mean, wh what you're are they going to do? What are they going to do? They ain't going to do nothing. How, yeah. how are they going to prove you're over or under 18? So I kind of thought about that too. You know, I'm like, how yeah, many of these porn. adult, how many of these adult websites say, are you 18 or older? And all you have to do is click yes. I mean, is all like, these rules. All of these rules are going to imply kids are still going to watch content that is not appropriate or intended for kids, but there's no way to stop millions of kids across the world 
watching YouTube. It's impossible. See, the the exactly. thing is, when they tell when they tell you not to watch it, I mean, it goes the same thing with a movie or anything. If they tell you not to watch this movie, or they tell yeah, you, yeah, I'm mature. I'm gonna do it. An R rated yeah, movie. To listen to, if they tell you not to listen to this movie, watch this movie, or listen to this song, that's gonna make the viewer or the consumer want to do it more. Exactly. Yeah, like, if you think about it too, Austin, you're really big into movies and stuff. A lot of people know you're big into movies and stuff. How many 15, 16 year olds sneak into R rated movies, Austin? Probably a lot, dude, right? I was <laughs> R rated movies way before I was allowed to. <laughs> well, you look like. I mean, here's another thing. Like, when I was like eight or nine years old, I was watching like fucking Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, and. Freddy yeah. Krueger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like horror icons that were made in the '80s and '90s. Mm -hmm. And what's really sad, guys, is it really just boils down to it's all about, it's just all about money. That's all it is. It's it's not about caring about the creators, caring about YouTube. Like, does YouTube not realize? All right, they're a multi-billion dollar company, but does YouTube not realize without creators, their website would be shit. It would be nothing. Be, yeah, it'd be nothing. If they didn't have the PewDiePie, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, all these huge gamers, all these huge YouTubers, they wouldn't be making all the money. It's because of the creators that they're even a freaking website. Exactly. You know? And now, oh, well, you can't do video game content. Well, it's like, fuck off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, another thing is about, look, look at the guy that was doing the press conference for the FTC. He looked like he was, he was about 40, 45 years old in a business suit. Yeah, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Exactly. You hear what he said too. He's like, "Oh, YouTube's the barrel, and uh, the creators so are the fish, fish in the barrel, and we're going to sh like shooting fish in a barrel." How does like, that oh, make that sense? Oh, he's saying they're going to be picking off fish, or the the fish are channels, and they're going to be picking off channels in the barrel. YouTube, and uh, pretty much. I mean, you you're know. telling me. Do you know how many? Do you know how many hours? I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you just do reactions, D-Crack. Oh, you're not a real channel, you know. But a lot of people like my videos. I'm not the only reaction channel out there. Yeah. You know, and it's like, do you know how many countless hours I have spent reacting to videos, uploading to build my channel, and then for them to come along? Oh, well, click of a button, your channel's gone. It's like, yeah. that's not fair at all. Like, here's the thing, dude, like. I've been doing YouTube for almost five years now. On April 23rd of next year, I'm going to be doing YouTube for five years. Yeah. Like, ever since I started, it's been going downhill. It's been going downhill since then. Like, it's it's sad to see what YouTube has become. It's been a couple years, MF. I feel like it started going downhill some somewhere around 2016. Yeah, like I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't really have any issue. Do you remember before it was either every vid, every reaction I uploaded was monetized, the yep. green symbol. Now it's like literally half of the videos I upload automatically get the yellow symbol, limited ads, and it's like, yeah. what's wrong with this video? I said a cuss word. Okay. And, and, oh, here's hold, what hold, scares hold, me. Hold on a second, Austin. Uh, here's the other thing. Like, do you guys remember the ad apocalypse? Oh yeah, yeah that PewDiePie. PewDiePie brought that on because he dropped the N bomb in a video yep. and that went downhill. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Austin. Well, what, what scares me the most is this news that we got. Now, we, we don't know if it's true or not, but a lot of people have been talking about it. Okay. It's this the situation where on December 10th, they're supposedly going to be deleting uh, all videos that have, that don't make money. Yeah. But the, the thing is, what scares me the most is that's my entire channel. I've, um, I've been building this, my channel specifically, I've had the channel since 2011 and I'm, I started posting in, in 2013, but so I've had this channel for about eight years of my life and I've been building it, building it, building it. And in 2017, I believe I had maybe less than 50 subscribers and I was getting a total of maybe 10 views per video and no likes, no, no comments, no nothing. But it wasn't until I met you guys that uh, the views and the, and the, the, the subscribers, the, Subscribers specifically been going up, you know, and now I'm standing at what over a, th a thousand subscribers. It's because we we kind of network with each other. Yeah, you know? yeah we, we, we help each, each other. other out. Yeah. And what scares me the most is that on, on December 10th, all my content is going to be completely worthless and all made for nothing. So what I did was I took all all the videos that I'll be afraid to lose. And I put it on like a little hard drive that has like two terabytes worth of storage. And I'm still not done. I still have a list of more that I got downloaded maybe tomorrow. But. Are you honestly, Austin, I was going to ask you this. Are you just, 
are you kind of just downloading the more like, would you say professional videos yeah, from the like, last year or two? Like, are there a lot of older videos you're like, well, this is just kind of crap. I'm downloading like, a lot <laughs> of the older videos too, but I'm downloading all the ones that I, I would hate to lose, you know, short, older short films I did with my dad or oh, stuff with your dad and your brother maybe or yeah, something like that. Just something like that. But I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I have to upload nice. to another platform, that's one thing, but I don't know. Here's another thing I brought up. Like, look at the people that applied for, for monetization. What's going to happen to them? Well, yeah, you finally just got remonetized, right? I mean, yeah. well, I, mean I, I guess me and you are kind of in the clear. Yeah, we're, we're in the um, green zone. But the thing is, let me just say this quick and then you continue if you want. But the thing is, you know, Austin, it's crazy because like the last few weeks, you know, like it was the huge thing with COPPA and the FTC, you know, Austin, like everyone's freaking out, you know, January 1st, starting 2020, January 1st is kind of like when shit's going to hit the fan, you know? And then, like, what, the last couple days or the last week, Austin, they kind of threw on, oh, well, on top of all of this, December 10th, so now there's not only one date of shit hitting the fan, now there's also December 10th, which you have to worry, will my channel even still be on YouTube, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy, because December 10th was supposed to be probably one of the greatest days I've had in a while. You know why? Because I'm such a movie freak. There's, like, it's a big movie release day. I think It Chapter 2 is coming out that day. Uh, a lot of a lot of different stuff is coming out that day that I'm excited for, and I was like, "Yeah, December tenth, December tenth." But now I got I got this shit to look forward to. So are you just gonna like wake up and just go to YouTube and just be like, "Well, I hope my channel's there." <laughs> yeah, like, oh, my channel's not gone. The thing I've been building for eight years of my life. Hope it's not gone by tomorrow. It's like, what the hell? The thing with me too, MF and Austin, it's really hard because you know, like, I've put so much work into my channel. You know, I do live streams. You know, I upload videos, and it's like it's your you know, income. it's your source of income. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say that. Like, I don't it's want people. Time job. I don't want people to think like. Obviously, YouTube and making videos and live streams. It's not all about money. It's like, oh, it's not like, oh, I'm just. Hello. Yeah. You there? Yeah. Did you, did you cut out there or whatever? I don't think so. Yeah, you, you just like cut off there. Oh, I don't know. Did you guys hear me? Did you hear him, Austin? Yeah, I got you. Okay. All I was going to say is, you know, um, if I didn't make money from YouTube, then I would have to go find a job outside of my house in YouTube, and then I wouldn't be doing live streams. I wouldn't be uploading videos nearly as much, maybe once a week, you know? So it's kind of like if all this work I've put into my channel and YouTube is just taken away, then it's like, you know, I'm up shit creek without a paddle. I'm going to have to find a, a another job it's just it, it's it's a lot of stress because like i said it's like you youtube's not all about money but i mean who's going to complain if they can make money off something they enjoy doing right exactly. i mean no, no no one wants to work a job that they hate no one wants yeah. to work at mcdonald's eight ten hours a day or flipping burger, burger. you know no one wants i mean no offense to anyone who has jobs like that but if you could sit at home and do youtube and make money enough to pay your bills or go out you know have to leave the house every day and work a job, what would you pick? You know? And it's like, it's, me too, and you, like you guys know my channel, you know, you know, I built it on just entertainment purposes and you know, I'm not monetized. And if I yeah. was, if I was to ever get monetized, I wouldn't mind the sudden income, you know, every now and then I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, like, well, I mean, who, who, like I said, who realistically is ever going to complain yeah. about yeah. making money, doing something you enjoy, right? My I channel mean, was like, never, <laughs> My channel was never based upon making money. It was always, a, you know, if I brighten somebody's day with what I created, that's that that just makes me happy to see somebody else happy. But exactly. Like, YouTube uh, is like it's becoming a, a giant cash grab, just kind of like like Netflix and Hulu and all them other places where they're going to get rid of all the independent creators who have nothing left to lose at this point because they're not monetized. And they're just going to leave all the, you know, the celebrities, the one that, that Google pushes out, you know, like Jack Black with Jablinski Games and Steve-O and all them celebrities that are Will getting Smith. <laughs> 4 million subscribers in like two days. It's like, it's like, what the fuck? Well, another thing too, like I was saying, Austin and MF, it's like, do you guys agree too? It's like a constant stress. Do you, do you ever wake up in the morning and you go to log in on your computer or your phone and you're like, I hope it's like. I shouldn't have the stress and the burden on me every day waking up hope thinking, oh, is my channel still on YouTube or did YouTube decide to take it down? It's like, yeah, I feel like YouTube should be more stable where, all right, this is something I do for fun entertainment. I'm, you know, I'm able to make a living off it as well. I shouldn't have to wake up every day and think, well, 
I hope my YouTube's still up. If not, well, I'm screwed. You know, it's just, it's just to that point where you never know if YouTube's going to pull the plug on your channel or not. And it's it's pretty well, we, stress. It's stressful. We've had this, we've had scary. situations like this. We've had situations like this many a times before. Okay, we started with the uh, with the whole net neutrality thing where, where we were going to start paying for YouTube. Then we had the whole YouTube situation, uh, YouTube Red situation, yep. and then yep. then we had the whole uh, adpocalypse situation, and now this. And this seems like the worst of the worst. Like this, yeah. this is sudden death. You know, this is like end of the world, end, end of the line. I've yeah. watched so many videos too, where it's like, and you guys will probably agree, how many videos are uploaded to YouTube that are made for everyone? Exactly. Right. Like, I like okay, if if I upload a gameplay video of me playing a call, the new Call of Duty game, that's rated M for mature. Yeah. So, but there's a lot of younger kids that play Call of Duty. Like, have you ever played? Have you ever played games online? You'll hear yeah. like fucking little six and seven year olds cussing people out on. Exactly. Oh, don't kill me, you fucker! You know, on the headset playing Call of Duty. So exactly. it's like, is, is this for kids? Is it not for kids? It's like, all right, Actually, I upload a ga yo. gameplay video. It's for everyone. You a know, it's not just for kids yo. or not. Yeah, Greg. A, a good example of that is when. Uh, have you guys ever seen that video? It was GTA Five where the, this guy was playing online with, like, a 10-year-old. Dude, so many younger kids play GTA, and that is not a kid's game. <laughs> no. I mean, there's, like, strip clubs, there's blood, there's shooting. There's, there's like, guts. Yeah. And again, again, bringing back the situation about the kids, you know, about if a kid is in a video. I have a lot of videos that uh, have uh, kids in them, you know, like my, my friend's little sister used to want to make videos with me. We'd do, like, little fun videos together. But, see, the, th the situation is, with uh, with the, the the option, you know, click to make your channel not for kids or for kids. Oh yeah. Even if you do that, you know, you, you still have to make sure every individual individual video is suitable for kids and or not. I don't do that because I think it's a waste of time. But what scares me is the fact that um, YouTube, like, let's say I, there's this video of me playing a game or something. And I'm like, okay, there's nothing really too bad wrong with this video. I'll just I'll make this video suitable for kids. OK, uh -huh. YouTube can go to that video and decide it's not for kids and I could get a strike just like that. Yeah, like, like it's not it's a lose lose situation. Exactly. Like they're not clear of, of, on like what these new guidelines are going to be. Well, the other thing is, too, do you guys know a couple months ago? It's I mean, I, I guess I'm glad I didn't do it a couple months ago, though. I was talking to my wife, Bree, you know, and you guys know I have two kids myself, Andrew and Ian, they're four and five. And I was thinking, um. <clears throat> Bree and I were considering making like a like a family Log, channel, you yeah, know, like 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 separate from D Crack, where it's me, Bree, and my boys, where we upload videos more of like a family channel. Well, yeah. according to the new rules, if me and my wife are in the videos, but I also show my kids, is the video made for kids or is it for everyone? My kids are just in the video. See, YouTube doesn't explain what is for kids. Exactly. And you're saying if I show my kids in a video, even though my audience is, you know, 18 to 25 year olds mainly, does that mean since my five year old son is in the video that it's for kids? No. This is gonna this this is gonna affect a lot of channels, especially family vlogging channels. There's exactly. a lot of family vlogging channels that, that 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 are popular right now. And you know, if I would have started a family channel, you know, I don't know, like um David and David Bree, like David Bree and family or something, just a random name. Do you know, Austin and MF, if all this stuff happening, and if I would have selected my whole channel for kids, Austin and MF, I would get no comments. People would not get notifications when I upload videos. I would not be able to do live streams. So literally, if I created a family channel, I would make no money off of it, and I would get no views. So what's the point? No exactly. money, no – if I get no views, no money – I can't even talk to my supporters and, you know, like they said, you know, comments. The comment section will be disabled. So – no money, no comments, no views. No What's live the, chat. What the hell's the point of uploading? Like I said, it's not all about money. But if you if you if you make a channel and you get a lot of subscribers, why shouldn't you be able to um, benefit off of it financially? If you exactly. get a lot of subscribers, it's hey, like plus, oh well, you don't get any money, you don't get any views. Okay, like all right. Here's <laughs> the other thing: if you set your channel to yes, this is for kids, you're gonna lose comments. You're gonna lose live chat when you when you go live streaming you're gonna lo lose notifications now that means when you upload a video on that i mean you guys probably know it. you upload a video that vid nobody you know how like if i upload a video a ding like d crack uploaded a reaction or something yeah 
you'll get no 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 one will get any notification so the only way they'll know your video is up there if they physically go on youtube and type in your name in the search bar and go to your channel oh there's a new video well the views are going to go way down <laughs> oh yeah definitely it, it makes no sense what's whatsoever guys I guess I'm glad my channel's mainly reactions, and I've deleted videos that kind of have kids and stuff in them. I have yeah. a couple. I've done a couple vlogs a couple years ago, like a Christmas vlog with my kids opening presents and with Bree. And um, I set those videos for kids, and I don't even really care. I just leave those videos up more as kind of like a memory, you know, just kind of as like you know, years from now I can have videos of my kids. Now, but um, now, I'm not trying well, to make money off of my kids well, being in a video. Well, 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 let me say this, dude. Like. Apparently, if you set your video to unlisted or private, they, they they're not gonna see it. Yeah, the, the YouTube and Kappa is not gonna see it. It's just for you. Oh, okay. I might just set it to so, private then, just to have want, them. If you want it as a memory, just I would just put it to private if I were you. Like I have, I uploaded a video a while back. You know, uh, one of my grandparents' weddings. You know, they're gonna delete that too. It's like, see, like it's it's a thing you said you deleted some of your videos i'm i'm the complete opposite i i'm ocd as hell now i've deleted videos before only like a two or day after uploading or whatever yeah but uh i'm extremely ocd and i like to make sure i keep everything on my channel but i don't know it's 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 it's, it's a, a giant gray area of the situation i feel like it's a little different with me though austin because you know i've done so many reactions man that like i when I first started off, I kind of reacted to videos that looking back now, they're just kind of dumb. I feel like, you know, so yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to miss uh, me reacting to a random try not to laugh video. You know, with your videos, Austin, I feel like they're more um, meaningful, you know, like yeah. you took the time to record whatever you're doing, edit it. Me, I just kind of sat down and reacted to a video. So it, it's kind of different, but I understand what you mean. But, and um, <laughs> well, guys, look, like another thing is like for my old videos, like, I used to do all, my channel was all Five Nights at Freddy's. Is that another gray area? But I, I really wish Coppa... Is the game teen? Well, that, that that was the thing I was just going to say. I hope Coppa goes by, like, the rating system, the official rating system for video games, where the official place that rates Five Nights at Freddy's is rated T for teen. Target, teen. Not, so, not 13 so thir and under. So 13 to 18, right? And yeah. then 18 plus is mature. Yeah. They shouldn't be doing this anyway. It's such a stupid... Exactly. There's no point. Because everybody no... plays video games. Everybody exactly. plays Minecraft. Minecraft is E for everyone because everybody plays it. Yeah. And, I mean, and, look at PewDiePie, the biggest... I mean, okay. The biggest independent creator on YouTube. Fuck T-Series. I still consider PewDiePie the biggest YouTuber because T-Series just just uploads random ass videos and you know they're not they're not a creator in my opinion you know no. it's one company and the thing is pewdiepie pewdiepie is what probably almost in his probably early 30s, 30s. yeah pewdiepie does and a bunch married. of he does a bunch of minecraft games are you saying that pewdiepie doesn't like, have the right to play minecraft because he's an adult like <laughs> here's the other thing he, he did a collab video with jack black with minecraft yeah. And what's really, really freaking scary is back in the early days of YouTube, when YouTube was at its prime, you mm -hmm. know, the top 10 uh, viewed and subscribed uh, channels were all independent. You had, yeah. PewDie you had PewDiePie, you had Smosh, you had yeah, Shane, Dawson. Yep, Shane Dawson. Dawson. Yep. But now, right. it, now it's more of just corporate. You know, you got T-Series, Justin Bieber, for some fucking reason. The, the late night show. The late night show. Uh, it's just, Jimmy it's Kimball. Corporate. It's all corporate shit. That's all it is. He, he, you know what I mean? Like like Jimmy Kimball as well. Jimmy Kimball. Do you think yeah. Austin? That's what. Do you think that's what drives the highest ads and the most money for YouTube? Oh, yeah. Is the, is these big exactly. corporate shows? <laughs> you know this. Okay, I, I've told you this before, but I'm gonna say it again for the podcast. Do you remember the Las Vegas shooting? Yep. Okay. Uh, the YouTuber Casey Neistat, big YouTuber. He did a video on the situation talking about the uh, the victims at uh, of the uh, Las Vegas shooting, and he was doing a uh, a GoFundMe page, you know, to send money to the pe the victims of the shooting. Yeah. Okay. The video was demonetized by YouTube. They are, they told him that he's not even allowed or supposed to uh, have a GoFundMe for that situation. Are you serious? Then Jimmy Kimmel uploads a video from his late night show, uh, talking about the Vegas shooting and it has ads on it. Are you serious right now? 
Yeah, he's he's all he's standing there crying, talking about the situation, and it has ads. Well, you know what, Austin? This is a little bit of a glimmer of hope, I guess, because I'm on YouTube now, and I went to uh, – I just clicked on the trending tab, you know, because mm-hmm. um, I'm just curious. And the number one trending video on my end is the beautiful world of Shane Dawson. So YouTube has the number one trending video now. Um, a Shane video, so that's kind of a little bit. Of again, hope. Shane Dawson, <laughs> he I gets like, a lot of views, though. Shane. I like Shane Dawson to death. You know, I like his videos. I, I didn't like him for a while, but I, I just got back into his channel. But I feel like, to a certain degree, I don't think he realizes, but I do think YouTube kind of sold him out a bit. And here's another YouTuber that I feel like YouTube is going to screw over. Look at Mr. Beast. Look how many Mr. people he he helped. Uh, honestly, I mean, they might, but I feel like, uh, I feel like Mr. Beast might have some contract with YouTube. Do you think Austin? Cause he probably Maybe. makes them a lot See, of money. All, <laughs> the money. all the money he makes, he must have like a shit ton of sponsors. It's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I want to sponsor this guy, you know? And, and it's the same scenario with all independent creators with Mr. Beast. I want to be that guy's friend, you know, <laughs> the same scenario. Honestly, one of the biggest YouTubers, I feel like I don't know where he's going to fall in is, um, uh, Markiplier. Oh, dude, oh. I like. Well, because I'm you on his channel. I'm on his channel right now. He, I mean, he does a lot of horror games and videos, but he does a lot of. Uh, he plays a lot of video games that might be considered for like towards adults, you know, MF and Austin. Yeah. But at the same time, they are cartoon animated games. So, are they for kids or are they for well, adults? He, I don't. He, here's the thing I brought up in the live stream. You or Kappa and the FTC. They got got knowledge, or they they just got noticed that that they know every every video game and cartoon or slash animation is not just for kids. Yeah, there there are some adult animations out there along with video games, so it might look it, but looks can be deceiving if they know what that means. Right. And the thing, and the thing is, like, I'm not saying by any means that we shouldn't be scared because I've watched a lot of these videos. They said we should be somewhat scared and you know wondering what's going to happen. But do you think, if you think about it, guys, do you think you or do you think FTC and Coppa is going to be able to go through every single YouTube channel and look, to then look through it, or are they just going to pick random ones here and there? Because they think... can't, they can't review every channel. They don't have the well, manpower. Yeah. Millions of channels. I mean, he, here's the other thing that the the guy for the FTC during the during the press conference he said 23 million videos, dude. There's more video. There, there's more channels than that. Mm-hmm. There's, there's like, way there's more channels there's than that. Channels being made every single day. Even even the troll accounts they have a couple hundred apiece. Exactly. You know what? I watched a video once, guys. I can't remember, but it was like every second. I think they said every second there's like um, 10 hours of video footage uploaded to YouTube. Did you know yeah. that? Like every second. Yeah. And Google, <laughs> the most is Google is bitching because they're running out of storage. Buy more fucking storage. You're Google. Exactly. You're like a, a multi-billion dollar company. That, that screwed hit- over YouTube and you're complaining about storage. Give yeah. me a break. Like, come on. You ruined YouTube when you bought it. Like. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, and by the way, MF, you know, if you go to a lot of these videos talking about Kappa, mm-hmm. you know, they have the sign the petition. It says save family friendly yeah. content. And now gonna, that, that's going in the description when I'm done with this. Well, this it has um, this has six hundred and fifty seven thousand oh, signatures. Yeah. Um, uh, and they're, tra- they're, they're trying to reach a million. So they I have over it. over half a million. I mean. Can YouTube and the FTC and COPPA, Austin, MF, I don't know. Can, can, can they ignore Can they ignore a million signatures of people? I don't think they can. Or do, do they have to address they, that? I really don't. <laughs> I mean. Because they initially had, uh, they, 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 only, they requested 500,000 initially, but now they're all of a sudden wanting a million. Yeah. Oh, wait, this was FTC or COPPA saying if we if you guys get this many signatures, we'll pretty much acknowledge maybe changing it? or like- They changed it. That's the problem. It was initially 500,000. Yeah, and they will change it to ten million. Right? I bet you that they were like, "Oh my god, it actually went to there." Let's see if they can get a million. Yeah. Like surprise, oh. surprise, people care. People obviously care enough for their livelihoods that they've been building for years. Exactly. Well, it's just hard for like channels like mine. Like, is like you know, Are we I don't safe? really. Oh, I don't really react to kids stuff, but it's like, is an angry grandpa reaction considered for kids? I would no. say no. I right. would consider no, but how many kids watch angry grandpa videos? Exactly. A, lot, a lot watch angry grandpa videos. So it's like, 
yeah, the language, the content is not really for kids, but is, uh, am I going to get dinged? Oh, well, it's you market not for kids, but kids watch your reaction. So therefore, oh, you're fucked. <laughs> freaking wild it's bizarre how how this situation is just playing out like it, it makes, makes no sense yeah it, it makes no fucking sense yo and you know one of the biggest videos about kappa guys is um there's a channel with over a million subscribers and um this is a uh, like i said channel with over a million subscribers and what this guy does is he um he builds uh legos you know yeah. and yep. people they automatically think oh legos that's a toy for kids well no it's not there's a lot of grown-ass adults who enjoy uh legos you know putting together <clears throat> le um thousand piece lego sets and it's kind of a community i'm not really into legos but i know there's a big community of um people who are adults who enjoy collecting toys collectibles enjoy uh legos mm -hmm. so are you saying a channel as innocent as putting together Lego, you know, they construct different Lego stuff. They're going to get fucked over. That seems like the most innocent content, doesn't it, Austin? Exactly. Like, what, what is wrong with uploading a video of you putting together, uh, you know, building a, a big ship or a boat out of Legos from scratch? Right. It's it, like plus, YouTube needs to be family friendly last year. Remember last year? Yep. Oh, you need to be family friendly. Now, now, YouTube 2020. Oh, you can't be family friendly and you can't be too edgy. So pretty much you have to upload videos of you sitting there smiling. Like basically. Yeah. <laughs> or just doing nothing. Just sitting there. Now, now the fact that YouTube is crashing and burning, what I really, really hope to happen if YouTube really does go out, you know, guns a blazing, I really hope that story fire can rise from the ashes. Yes, guys. It's supposed to be, you know, do you think, Austin, in your honest opinion, if shit goes too far and shit just keeps hitting the fan, that a new C CEO could come in for YouTube and say, Susan, it's not working? And, and Dude, I, I revamp can honestly YouTube. Hope. We all freaking hope. You know, nobody freaking likes Su uh, Susan. No one does. She needs to be fired. She does. She ruined YouTube. Like, no offense, but you ruined YouTube. And plus, she had the nerve to make uh, her own channel. Yeah, like like anybody's gonna watch that bullshit. And it, it's like anyone's gonna subscribe to her. Do you guys see like the YouTube creators YouTube channel? Anytime they post an update or a video, it's like mass dislikes. Like no one's fucking happy. Yeah, exactly. No. And guys, I, I just pull up the the screenshot on my phone. Like subject matter from Kappa. This says subject matter that that is appealing to children. Like any video can be appealing like, to children. Like, for example, kids, jokes, music, kids games, video slash computer games, children's TV shows or stars, cartoon characters, sports, stories, toys, kids, children's books, fantasy, uh, <clears throat> children's arts and crafts, pets. Dude, that is like 90% of YouTube. P products primarily purchased or are consumed by kids like snack food or cereal. Dude, what the? That's like cereal. Of YouTube though. It's like they got like, like, Come on. And you, and you know, like having kids myself, like there's a, a big, huge example on YouTube. There's a YouTube channel called Blippy where my four and my five year old they love his channel. Yeah. It's obviously like there are these channels, guys, that they literally it's innocent. They upload videos, educational videos that are geared towards younger children, like my kids, four and five. Who, they love him. He's going to lose his comments. He's going to lose money. He's going to, you know, it's just like, why should these channels that are making kid content that is innocent and okay get fucked over, you know, millions of subscribers just because, oh, well, a kid might watch a video that's not appropriate. It's like, well, okay. Like what was the whole purpose from the get go? It's like okay. Here's the here's the other highlighted part from Kappa. Language of the of the website such as language is that simple enough to be understandable to children, twelve or under. Short, colorful, the col colorfuls or whatever, uh, slang and pop culture fra phrases. Uh, for example, like kids site maybe be identified as such as language as kids only fun free stuff whatever cool duh games ask your parents etc what does that even mean i don't know <laughs> dude 
So if you if you say the word duh in a video, it's for kids? I guess so. Oh, that makes no sense. And whether the channel... Yeah, channel. <laughs> whether <clears throat> the, web, the website uses visual content appealing to children, quote-unquote, animated characters, bold or fast-moving graphics, or bright and... Bright and, and, and other colorful... Basically, bright colors. Oh, I remember someone talking about that MF. So what? If I make a thumbnail that's trying to be appealing, you know, you try to use bright colors and stuff in thumbnails, rainbow. right, right, Austin? Because you 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 try to catch people's eye, right, Austin, to click on your video. Exactly. exactly. So if I have a bright color in my thumbnail, is it for kids? What if I'm like, um, yeah, I don't know. Freaking crazy, dude. I'm I'm, I'm just I'm I'm so over it. And if you, YouTube, they honestly need to do the right thing. And listen to these people that are complaining. Listen to their creators. Like, do you think like Susan and these high-end YouTube people are just sitting in their mansions, like they don't even care? Or are they just They're like, just, well, whatever? I think they are. They're sipping on their brandy. <laughs> oh, or Susan's like, I, I'm a, I'm the CEO of a billion-dollar company. I don't give a fuck. You know what I honestly think? I think the CEO of YouTube should be someone who has a YouTube channel that's successful and they know how YouTube works. Like, like I said, PewDiePie or someone exactly. like that. Someone who knows how YouTube works. Like, who the hell? Like, before well, Susan, where did before, she come from? Yeah, before Susan was the YouTube CEO. Like, where the fuck did she come from? She just like, oh, I'm CEO of YouTube. Oh, like, did, did she ever did she ever do YouTube? Or she's just like, she I'm the CEO. I think she might have came from Google. You know, when Google was bought out by by the original YouTube creators. Yeah, well, like, I really wish that the original YouTube creators came back to fix this. Yeah, because I, I, I bet they would be really disappointed to see all I this shit. I think they would be. Well, do you know this? Do you know this, Austin and MF? I don't know if it's 2006, 2007. You know when YouTube was like first started, first started uh, off. 2005. I might be wrong, but didn't the weren't the two original creators of YouTube? There are two men. Didn't they sell YouTube to someone for like millions of dollars or something? Well, if I remember correctly, I believe they had the they had YouTube. You know, up until about 2014. Yep, right around there. And they offered them millions, I bet. They off Google offered them millions, or maybe millions. a billion. I don't know. It's like, it's like, why would you do something to something so precious as YouTube? Like, dude, if someone offered me that, I would obviously no. I would say no. I mean, I guess those guys are set for life, though. I guess they maybe they're just like, we don't want the stress of being responsible. Well, give us the money, we're out. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, like, I bet you creators are like, please come back. Like, YouTube is nothing without you. It's like Rose on Titanic. She's like, come back! Well, it's just hard because it seems like every week there's just new rules and new problems, and it's just constant. It's like we're – it's. you guys feel like we never get a break. YouTube comes out with a new rule, and a week later, oh, well, now there's this rule and this rule. It's, it's like, like – con It's like, oh, come on. Can you give us a fucking break here. Yeah, and all these YouTube creator studio videos they make, they're like these, you know, Google employees smiling. We have a new update for you all. It's like, we don't fucking want it. And, yeah. And that's the other thing, too. Like, they smile. They look happy every time telling you bad news or whatever. Like, yeah. do you understand what you're saying? You know what I mean? Like, do you understand what you're saying, people of YouTube? Yeah. And plus... People are, are are waiting to get monetized when you have all automatic systems that don't do and it right away. No offense to anyone. You probably kiss that goodbye. You know, o what Otis has been trying five or six times to get monetized, yeah. the Otis show. I and mean, he got denied probably, every time. You can probably kiss that goodbye. Yeah. I mean, I don't. But I, I think it's like a favorite thing because there's they're picking channels that are monetized and making youtube money when it's like the it's like the favorite child yeah the favorite child out of like four out of like probably a billion people on youtube yeah. you know what's scared though mf you know we're talking about monetized not monetized but think i mean austin too it's like just because me and you are monetized mf does that automatically make us safe or do you have to I be think making, we're safe. or do you have to be make like even though we're monetized are we still not considered you know, viable Austin, you're like what that, that those words said, 
Like, do they consider channels like you have to be making YouTube like hundreds of thousands of dollars to be considered worth their time? Or if you're monetized in any way, are you considered um, okay in their book? Or do you have to make them thousands of dollars a I month? Really, like, I don't I know. Really, I do not know. I see the thing is, I'm about to reach what 100,000 video views on my channel. Yeah. And dude, like, I don't even know if they're even going to go after like, uh, they might even go after channel names. Like when they're scanning names, they might even say, hmm, I wonder what this D crack is. That sounds very sexual. Let's check this channel out because of the name. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm I mean, not to sound dirty, but that, that's, the, that's, that's, that's how YouTube works. They look for dirty names. They look for swear words. They look for certain thumbnails, certain titles, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how they get your ass. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. For, for bullshit reasons. Oh, remember, too, they said in the uh, kids' content fall under. Remember, you even said sports, MF, remember? Yeah. So what? Me, me, Phil, uh, your guys' vlogs at the Sabres game? Is that for kids? No fucking adults watch hockey. Um, I, I didn't show the ice at all. So no. I showed the ice. I, I showed the bleachers. Does that count? Does guys if you literally count? if you literally go to google though and type in kappa i mean it's just pages of creators making videos pissed off like what well, we're three creators pissed off yeah like literally i'm in the home page of youtube right now 150,000 views it says if the ftc doesn't change kappa our channel disappears must watch as kappa is ruining youtube like there's so many videos like this they you are. know it just that, that's the thing that they're ruining youtube by doing this like we said earlier in the podcast, they're they're like fifty to sixty year old men and women that don't know, they don't know a fucking thing about YouTube mm -hmm. or the internet in general. So they're just coming to conclusions and assuming that oh, this thumbnail has Family Guy or oh this th this thumbnail has SpongeBob or this 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 video has SpongeBob in the background as a stuffed animal click Hey Austin have you ever heard of this channel I don't know why but it was just recommended um on the YouTube homepage it's called um Cin Cinema Massacre Yeah yeah that's uh that's the angry video game nerd. Yeah, yeah, this guy yeah. looks very familiar, but like right here, I'm going to his video. Like, like, what would his channel be considered, Austin, if he does movie and game reviews? Is that yeah, for kids? Very, very <laughs> good point because his show, Angry Video Game Nerd, where he plays literally like NES. SNES. Yeah, this guy here, he has 3.15 million subscribers on Cinema Massacre, and like right here, it says a uh, Super Mario Bros. the movie 1993 movie review. Is that kids or is that just a movie review? You know, like, I don't... If, if you know Angry Video Game Nerd at all, okay, he he is a character. You know, he plays yeah. plays, yeah. plays the, all these old NES games or SNES, Sega yeah. Genesis, etc. And he, he he has a he, he cusses a lot. That's like the whole thing about the character. With yeah. that, that I, I would say that'd be more on the adult side, but YouTube yeah. may not think that way. And it's really hard here too, Austin, because one of his videos here says um, uh, Jurassic Park Two review. Jurassic Park is an adult movie, but don't kids like dinosaurs? So what yeah. is that for kids? Like that, no, that's, <laughs> that's that's another gray area. But don't a lot of little kids like? I mean, I have a yeah. I have two boys, four and five. They love playing with toy dinosaurs. Isn't that normal? Dude, like, the dude literally has a video called uh, "The Flying Fuckernauts versus the Astro Bastards." Is that exactly? <laughs> like, is is that going to get demonetized because of the name? It's like, well, yeah. And like, the thing the is. Fuck? Like, I remember about a week ago, guys, when this all hit, I felt, remember, I told you guys to select, no, your channel is not for kids. And I thought, like, if we did that, we would be safe. Not necessarily. Uh, apparently not, because if we select no and they say, oh, well, we view this video as for kids. You're fucked, basically. I yeah, could say this. Like, I, I don't even make $42,000 in a whole year. My mom doesn't make that in a year. So man. how would I pay a forty-two grand fine? Like, per literally. Video. I, I would be probably going to like jail oh, or prison because I couldn't video? pay it. per video. Yeah. Per oh video. God. I'd be like, uh, no, no, no. If, if YouTube ever came up to me and said, hey, this video is, is, is not the way you said it was, you now are being sued for this amount of money. I'd be like, kiss my ass, suck my dick two times, times on a Tuesday. It's not even YouTube though, Austin. It's, it's, a, it, it's, the it's the FTC and COP are the ones who can apparently find creators. But how are they going to enforce? If they, if they find you, Austin, and you don't have the money, 
if you don't have the money, how the hell would you pay? What am I going to be in fucking debt for the next 50 years of my life paying back 40 grand? You, you know, like, send me to jail or something? It's stupid. Jail time? I, yeah, like, you're not making, you're, you're not clarifying. Yeah, imagine going to court. Yeah, I uploaded a reaction and, and uh, they find me. I they don't want, the, I'm going to go prison. Yeah, like, yeah, we're sitting in court. Oh, sir, why are you here today? Um, I just filmed a video and this group doesn't like it and they're suing me for forty thousand fucking dollars. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, but at the same time, at the same time though, all these rules and lawyers with COP and FTC, the freaking court system would probably be like, well, it's right here in the fine print. You're fucked. I don't know. Well, he here's the thing. I bet you the judge would go like, huh? Yeah. You know what's confused too. You know what's really bad too, guys. If you go to the actual YouTube creator YouTube channel, remember the main video that hit with that lady talking about Kappa MF. Remember yep. the lady at the very end too. I'm not sure if you watch this, Austin. She says, well, pretty much, we don't know everything. You need to go and consult your lawyer. I'm 25 what? years old. I'm 25 years old. You think I have? Lawyer. You think I have the money to fucking pay a lawyer? What a couple hundred dollars an hour to talk to? No. Well, well, that's like saying that's like saying, "Hey, I need help on this math test." Okay, I'll help you on this math test, but but be warned, I don't know everything on it. Or go hire a private tutor that's expensive as hell. I don't have the money. And he, <laughs> here's the other thing: like, I'm almost twenty years old, and I don't have a fucking lawyer. Yeah, your mom doesn't even have a lawyer, no. does she? I mean, yeah. who, I mean, who who other than PewDiePie and these huge YouTubers just have? You know, go to your con, scroll on your contacts on your phone. Oh, I'm I'm calling Billy Bob, my lawyer, to ask yeah, for lawyer help. or a freaking agent or anything like that. You know, like c come on, we're, we're not we're not the these big YouTube stars. Do you really think though that COPPA and FTC guys? Do you think they're gonna scrape? Do you think they're gonna sc scrape the top of YouTube, looking at all the big channels, and then you think? I'm really hoping smaller channels like ours guys will kind of get lost in the mix. You know? Yeah. yeah. Because how? I mean, like, like no offense to you, Austin, but you know your channel is a little smaller than me and MS, you know. And it's like, are they are they really going to scrape down to the bottom and say who's ATV Studios? We're going to find him, or are they going to focus on a YouTuber with two million subscribers? You know, like, know. See, honestly, <laughs> just like just like the freaking net reality situation, just like the freaking uh, freaking uh, uh, adpocalypse. All I all I can hope, all we can all hope, is that this is just just speculation and yeah, hopefully speculation and theory hopefully it, won't, hopefully it won't happen yeah like and plus what was the third uh subject matter yeah because oh, we could probably talk about this say, all yeah, night we, we, we've been talking about this for like an hour okay yeah. all right so the last subject is about drum roll the uh the next collab yeah uh, yes. well, you, you guys probably know we uh me, D Crack and ATV Studios here. We did a a collab back in September. Yeah, it was called it was just initially called the New York Collab, but then I changed it. I called it I just changed it to the collaboration season one. Because yeah. I because I you know, if YouTube ever you know, if we're still on YouTube at the time, we're planning we had this idea, you know, to get together maybe once a year and film another little get together and each time we will try and go to something place different. Yeah. Uh and the current the current idea is that you guys were going to come down to Georgia, yeah. for maybe like one or two days, and then we were going to go to Orlando, Florida, and go to Universal and stuff like that. Yeah, have fun and have fun. And uh, the other idea was Las Vegas. Yeah, well, that we still have a five year period for that. Yeah, like guys, no, no lie. When 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 these guys were up, when we went to when we went to what was it, Chili's? Yeah, Chili's. ATV decided to grab a napkin and write a contract. Yep. Said within a five-year period, we're gonna be going to Las Vegas for a collaboration. Yep, yep. You know what's crazy too, Austin? Like I was just looking at my computer the date. Today's uh, November twenty-fourth, dude. It was only two months ago we would have been in Buffalo. It feels longer, doesn't it? It bro? does. It was only two months ago. It feels way longer. And, and, and like, like I said, the whole plan is that, you know, maybe towards every end of September, we're going to do this little get together. Yeah. And maybe the third year around, we'll go to Illinois and see David, you know, and, I don't and, know. And Bree and the boys. Whatever. Yeah. Because two months ago, uh, September 24th, we would have been, um, or at least I would have been in Buffalo for what? I'm um, like a day at that point, probably one yeah. day. Yeah. So 
does it does it not feel longer, Austin? I feel like it feels longer than only Actually, two months ago. Guys, <laughs> like at this time in September on the twenty fourth, we'd be hanging out in my living room. Yeah, we might. Maybe we would have went to the 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 it movie that night. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was our. Uh, no, it wasn't our chill night because the twenty third was. Well, all my vlogs, you know, they have the date on them. Yeah. So you, you can just figure it out that way, but. We we um I came to Buffalo on the twenty second, right? Or was it the twenty first? Oh, twenty third. Okay. So uh, I landed, it was like midnight, so it was like early twenty fourth. Yeah. And it was like one o'clock in the morning when we decided to go walk down my street. Yeah. Yep, yep. But but yeah, guys, that that is the 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 next thing within what a year or so about another year or so we're gonna try and get together again for another yeah week. you know what we could start doing too guys i mean you know because obviously in live streams you know our fans and people have been very generous um because remember last time you know when we kind of put everything together we put it together in like what less than a month austin before we went yep, yep. so this time i think every month we should just try to put a little money aside because then by this uh by september of next year then we'll be, a little we'll bit, have, we'll be better prepared we'll anyway. have uh, a little bit more money saved up as well so we won't be you know tied on money and, uh, yeah. and pays yeah. for no gash yeah it's gonna be yeah, come on, man. <laughs> you need to pay for that gash you know yeah. I, I, hey, I'll have a job by then, so <laughs> I'll be able to pay for gas. But but yeah, guys, that that is the the next thing that is going to happen within an, another year or so. But you guys want to start wrapping up this podcast? Yeah, this, this podcast was fun. If you if you like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and and, and we'll do more of these. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, sorry, guys, if we're just kind of rambling on. We don't, this is our first time doing a podcast. We're not like pros at this yet. Yeah. But, our, um, <laughs> our, YouTube, our YouTube channels will be in the link description below. Yes, it will. Yes. But yeah, guys, if you enjoyed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, I should say. Yep. If you liked it, hit the subscribe button. Hit Hit the like button as well. And if you dislike it, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and make and MFF sure... Orange, you're not allowed to watch this. No. <laughs> oh, cut, come on, let's not bring him up. But <laughs> uh, <clears throat> make sure to subscribe to the ATV Studios and Decrack as well. And if you're not, become a member of Decrack as well. And we'll catch you guys within episode two of the podcast. Peace out. Peace. Peace out, everyone.